walk around of my M416 trailer I converted for overland and camping. So it's got a Smini, booth, Smini built rooftop tent. It's got a roof rack uh, to hold that on there and it's a telescoping roof rack. The first video I did of this was a little shaky. Had several requests to redo the video, so I'm going to try and make sure this one's not as shaky. Okay, this trailer started out as a 1967 Stevens M416. Um, the aluminum top uh, came from the military. I believe it had a searchlight in it at one point. We're going to go over the basics here first. So, put wheel adapters on it so it matched the bolt pattern on my Jeep. And I put 35 inch tires and 17 inch wheels on it. So, um, I don't have to carry a spare at this particular time. I carry two jerry can holders towards the front of the vehicle. I got two and a half gallon jerry cans in there right now. There's one on each side. Those are Smitty built um, fuel can carriers. And they just bolt right onto the side of the view, uh, the Jeep. Or in this case, the trailer. Okay. I've got a high lift jack mount that I've mounted to the side. It doesn't interfere with me opening up the top. So, and I put hinges on the top because it was supposed to be just a four guys pick it up and move it but I've just put door hinges on it and as you can see it worked out pretty good okay I've relocated the tail lights so and replaced them so they were originally mounted down there for the military I put on some trailer lights that are waterproof submersible and I remounted them higher up and the reason I did that is because on the other side where the license plate goes uh, I needed the room to mount the license plate and still give me the clearance I needed for the Jeep overall or excuse me the trailer overall moving to the back of the trailer I've got two uh, water cans that I'm carrying back here currently of course they can be fuel cans as well and there I'm shaking the camera sorry um, so, um, surplus, uh, can holders, get over here, and they're just, you know, military surplus, water cans are military surplus, I was lucky enough to find the straps online several years ago, so, uh, they're hard to find now. And this is where I've relocated the light to give the license plate the clearance it needed. So it's above the bottom of the trailer in case I do go off-roading with it. Sorry for the shaking. I'm doing my best. For the top, I mounted two handles to it. I mounted this handle first. And uh, put it right dead center. thought I did a pretty good job with that. Only problem was it wasn't wide enough, so I got a CJ7 uh, grab handle, and I mounted that on, and now I can lift that pretty easily. I made some homemade latches for the top, so these were some of those jerry can holders, and I just mounted those up there like that. Pretty simple. Here's the other jerry can holder. And here's the tongue box. This is where the solar resides on the trailer. Give you an internal view. Here's the solar charge controller. Cables coming in for it. I've got two 35 amp batteries, um, so I get 12 volts. 
come over on this side. So this is a power cutoff. So that cuts off all the power when not in use. So any of the receptacles or switches, I can kill them. So if it's all locked up and I don't want anybody messing with it, uh, they can't steal power or turn anything on needlessly. You may be asking yourself, well, what does that cable there do? Well, that's for a CB radio, and we'll kind of go over that. But basically, I've got it hooked up, so um, my CV, CB radio antenna comes in here, so I can have uh, communications for the trailer when it's stationary at camp, and somebody takes the Jeep somewhere else. Uh, it's got a CB in it, so we can stay in communication. Okay, this is a view of the trailer with the roof rot, rooftop rack extended. So uh, it's at its full extension. You can see I've got the top of the trailer open and I have plenty of clearance. Let me go over here and you can see it really doesn't even touch the rooftop rack. But what it gives me the ability to do is open that up so that I can access all the stuff that I've got crammed in here. So this is your typical, you know, stuff. There's a screen house, there's a canopy, there's cooking supplies, there's a cooler, there's uh, extra fuel cans and extra water cans. So it really depends on what we're doing and where we're going as to what we leave at home and what we take with us. But this stays um, loaded all the time. And, um, you know, we can do a video on that if we need to, but it's got four chairs, two tables, uh, the coolers, it's got some grills, uh, it's got a step ladder in case we need to get that for anything. Uh, once again, we talked about the screen house and the canopy. It's got uh, bathroom supplies, it's got a little that camouflage thing right there. It's a little outhouse shower slash bathroom tent. Uh, so it, these things hold a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. So if that's what you're looking for to go off-roading, these things can have the capacity to carry whatever you need them to. Here's a view of the bottom of the rooftop tent, and you can see I've got plenty of room between it and the top once again. And we'll go over how we mounted all that stuff here in a minute. Here you can see that I've replaced the uh, standard uh, drop leg support with a hand cranked <coughs> boat trailer uh, support and it still has the Lynette ring on it. I've not adapted that with one of the fancy dancy 360 degree twist three hitch, hitch points but that may be in the near future. I've also extended the tongue on the trailer so that I can open the back of the Jeep without having to worry about it hitting the tongue box or anything else like that uh, uh, boat trailer stand. Works out pretty well. Okay, so there's the solar panel. It's a 100 watt solar panel that gives me plenty of solar. Uh, it's sunny where I live all the time in Florida, so it basically keeps it charged 100%. Here's part of the external lighting that I've mounted to the rack. Um, LED lights. They work out really well. Don't draw a lot of power, but give plenty of light at night. You can see some of the wiring harness for the electrical, both for the solar panels the CB antenna and the lighting. It's got a Smitty built rooftop tent. Coming to the back you see the other part of the support and this is where I've mounted the CB antenna. I think it's a four footer. Sorry the sun's in my way so I can't really tell how far up I've gotten there. Uh, and it's on a spring mount so it gives it plenty of sway. To raise and lower the rooftop rack, I utilize these linear actuators. 
and I want to say these are 18 inches in length which gives me an 18 inch lift they lift at about a half inch a second so in under about less than a minute for sure I can totally raise or lower the rooftop rack so the power box has a 112 volt outlet and it has 12 volt accessories one's a cigarette lighter one's USB this switch controls the rooftop rack going up and down telescoping these two are light switches okay so once again the components for the rack came from compact camping concepts they have these kits and they come uh, unfinished so you need to paint them you know to match your particular project but these uh, the most valuable thing about it is the way they've got these set up here so they give you a nice square joint uh, you will need a, a couple drill bits because the steel you're going to use is going to eat through some drill bits that's a view there and that's a view there once again sun's out pretty hard today so it's hard for me to see exactly what I'm filming so I'm hoping I'm doing a nice stable job for everyone this time you can see the brackets on the other side and uh, it's well worth the money so in addition to those brackets, <coughs> I bought these corner brackets. Let's see if I can get... Uh, let me see here. There where they are, right here. Okay, so those corner brackets came in really handy because with my application and the way this top sits in here, I needed to mount, instead of to the side, I needed to go with my rack and mount it front and back because I wanted to have clearance for this top to remain and protect what I've got in the trailer and basically give me the clearance that I needed so I use those brackets front and rear and what I did was I mounted them I drilled holes where they were supposed to be and I also had to add some uh, uh, what is it uh, I used a two inch receiver hitch and I cut a couple pieces of metal off of that welded them together uh, mounted them up there made sure it all kind of matched yeah my welds aren't the prettiest in the world but it worked that gave me the extension that I needed on the back side I, I didn't have to uh, slice up that uh, two inch receiver what I did, you know, and weld it together. What I did is I just cut it to match, and I used that as an extension. And once again, that gave me the clearance I needed, so the top would go up and down unimpeded. Okay, so on this side, you can see that I didn't use the brackets that came with the tent. I just put them right into the brackets for the uh, cross member, and that's that silver bolt right there that you see and it goes up under there and utilizes the bolt that came with the tent I did that on both sides of the passenger side because once again I didn't have the right measurements to start with I couldn't find them online so I just went for it built this thing as I went and it all turned out pretty good Okay, so that basically concludes my initial walk around video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some ideas. I'm going to do a more thorough uh, video on the telescoping uh, rack build uh, as a part two. So look forward to that. And uh, please, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm trying to build the channel a little bit. If you have more ideas about content, the quality of the content, things you want to see, uh, you know, leave a comment. Let me know what uh, what interests you. Uh, we're here to try and make this an enjoyable experience as we do things, and hope you follow along. Thanks. Thank you for watching the video, and uh, please click like and subscribe. See you next video.